We had a, a an interview with Menachem Begin. Uh, it was done in his office in Jerusalem, and we had two of us uh, NBC correspondents there asking questions, and three correspondents in the Washington studio hooked up by satellite. And uh, Mr. Begin was told, uh, was asked to get there 30 minutes ahead of time, as we always did, and Presidents and prime ministers hate to get anywhere 30 minutes ahead of time. They always figured, you don't need 30 minutes, I'll come in five minutes ahead of time. He came in about two minutes ahead of time. And as we went on the air, as a result of not having time to get things ready and prepare and check things, uh, somebody told me just as we went on the air that Mr. Begin's earpiece was not picking up the correspondents in Washington. He couldn't hear them. And uh, so I told, uh, we had about 30 seconds to air time. I told one of the engineers present, you guys are trained to keep out of the picture, but in this case, forget about that. Get in the picture if you have to. Take Mr. Begin's earpiece off and try to give him another one, to do something so he'll have a working earpiece and he can hear the people in Washington. So we went into the program, the two of us in his office in Washington were asking questions. The people in Washington at the, in the moment couldn't fit in with, to it. Uh, so as we were asking questions in Begin's office, uh, if you were watching this event in this country, you, would, you saw a, an engineer, rather stout, and he had on even in those days, today it's the fashion to show your belly button. It wasn't the fashion in those days, but he had a T-shirt that didn't come down to the top of his pants. And you saw this stomach, close up of Bagan's face, <laughs> stomach here, hands fiddling with his ear, belly button showing, and uh, it looked awful. So the guy got through fiddling with Bagan's ear, and sure enough, we could get the correspondence in Washington. And a little later on, uh, I got word in my earpiece that the sound uh, to Washington, the, uh, the whole program was, was cut off. The satellite wasn't working. The picture wasn't going back to Washington. So now it was the time of the people in Washington to rescue the program. They started talking among themselves about issues that we were talking with Megan about, and we were cut out, including the guests. Uh, we were mute in uh, Tel Aviv. So I told the Prime Minister, Mr. Begin, I'm sorry to tell you, this was after the problem we had already had, that uh, we're off the air right now in the U.S. and I hope they'll put it together any minute and we'll go back again. So Begin grumbled that, I'm sorry about that, that was a very important question. He was in the middle of a long-winded answer on a very important question. So in a few minutes, I got word, okay, you're back on the air. And Mr. Begin, we're back on the air. He immediately launched into the answers of the previous questions, starting from the beginning stuff he had already said, because he didn't know where we left off. And he continued on for quite a while. And uh, finally, I heard in my earpiece, say goodbye. This is the director telling me, he said, thank you, Mr. Begin. Now, goodbye for Meet the Press. Thank you, panelists. Good night until next week, whatever. And so I started into the spiel. But now we had not realized that Begin's earpiece, which picked up the people in Washington, in Washington, also picked up the director's voice, who was right outside in a truck, and they heard him say, say goodbye. As far as he was concerned, someone was telling him to say goodbye. So before I could do anything, Begin was looking into the camera with a look of amazement and frustration on his face say goodbye, and the last the American audience saw, the Prime Minister of Israel, was a guy saying, say goodbye, whereupon I said goodbye for the program and didn't explain to the audience anything about what had happened because I didn't have, <laughs> have time to do it. It was the worst program I've ever seen in terms of technical failure. And Begin was very cheerful about it. When the program was over, he was very nice. He was not in a rage. He had a right to be, but he wasn't.
I was very fond of the little man. He was a tiger for his cause and somewhat unreasonable in so far as some of his opponents were concerned, but he, he put up with that nightmare program.